John Curtis of uh, Central Maine Merge Branch 391 used his extensive knowledge of the labor movement and lots of hard work and lots of research to inform today's workers in their struggle for living wages, fair treatment, and a right to organize. His easy-to-read booklet, Low Wages and Other High Crimes, Untold Stories of the 99%, is a tool that can help people see that victory against powerful opposition is possible and guide them on how to get there. And because you've brought that lesson forward so well and so creatively, John, I'm proud to present you with the 2015 Special Education Award. Congratulations. Every once in a while, I would research an a interesting piece of labor history and then do a story in the newsletter. And at one point, I realized I could collect these into a booklet. And then I started adding to it, you know, doing extra work. And uh, last year, I finished, finally, and I had 38 stories. Uh, I was inspired by what's going on with fast food workers and how they've been organizing for $15 an hour in a union. And I thought if they sort of knew about some of these struggles in the past that are very similar, very similar, that they might draw inspiration and realize that what they're up against has been surmounted in the past. I, it's, it feels great. I'm truly happy. I never, I, I never considered when I wrote this that it would ever even be considered for an award. My motivation was to like take labor history out of the library and put it into the streets, put it on the sidewalk where people could use it. <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to see it mass produced. I'd love to see it used in schools as a f feature of, you know, U.S. history. That would be the best thing. Again, it's geared, it was written to, to younger people, people who really didn't know the terminology used in labor and things, and I tried to explain all that. One of my stories is strictly Postal Service letter carriers. It deals with the postal strike in 1970, which is a really dramatic story. And it is so relevant today because one of the motivations for that strike was the fact that letter carriers in big cities, for instance, New York City, a, a large percentage of them qualified for public assistance because the wages were so low. They met the requirements for food stamps, for instance, and even welfare. This is very similar to the situation in fast food and retail. 